Hello, I'm Daniel Kirschen and I will be teaching you this course on power system. When you hear the word power system economics, the first thing you think about is probably money. But what do you mean by money? Well, first we could look at it as trying to minimize costs. And in terms of cost, we can talk about operating costs, which are the cost of the fuel for the generating plants, the cost of personnel, the cost of maintenance. And we also have the investment costs, the cost of building or buying equipment, such as generators, lines, transformers, switching devices, everything that you need to have a power system. Another aspect of money is what you might find in a competitive electricity market, where you might want to be maximizing your profits. Or if you take the perspective of the consumer, you might want to maximize the utility or benefits that you get from electrical energy. But when we talk about power systems, we can never forget the importance of reliability. And when you are talking about power system economics, we always have to consider reliability at the same time as money. Why do we need to consider reliability in power system economics? Well, if we look at operational reliability, which deals with the system's ability to withstand falls, failures, forecasting errors, and other common operational problems, we usually deal with these issues by operating the system with a security margin. But operating a system with a security margin costs money. Therefore, we'll have to strike a balance there. If we look at the longer term, what you could call planning reliability, which is the ability of the system to handle longer term problems, such as making sure that we have enough generation capacity to handle situations where some large units are on long-term maintenance, or if we have multi-hydro system ability to withstand long periods of droughts, well, we need to build enough spare capacity to deal with these issues, and again, that costs money. So, reliability has a cost, in terms of providing a security margin and some spare capacity. In particular, we have to run additional generating units to have operating reserves. We have to limit production of some cheap units to avoid problems in case of a sudden outage in a transmission network. Or we have to build additional generators and transmission lines to improve the long-term planning reliability. But if reliability has a cost, it also has a value, because a poor reliability is going to cause consumer outages, and these outages are going to cause a loss of revenue for commercial and industrial consumers, and a loss of comfort for residential consumers. Calculating this value is usually done using surveys of consumers. This is not a very accurate method, but that's the best we can do. And the idea of these surveys is to try to estimate what the cost of the latest outage was for consumers, or to measure their willingness to pay extra to avoid outages. This leads to the concept of value of lost load, which is defined as the average value of a mega hour of electrical energy not delivered without notice. The emphasis is obviously on average because different consumers, in particular different consumer classes, will give completely different values to this lost load. For example, a semiconductor factory will put an extremely high value on the reliability of service because even very short interruptions result in multi-million dollar losses. Residential consumers obviously put a lower value on interruptions. Estimates of the value of lost load are not very accurate and they typically range from something like $2,400 to $20,000 per megawatt hour, which is from 100 times to or more uh, larger than the cost of energy. So power system economics has traditionally been a problem of balancing money and reliability, or what I like to call balancing the greed and the fear. But how do we model this balance? Well, 
It turns out we can model this as a mathematical optimization problem, where we will minimize a cost or maximize a profit, and we will treat reliability through the introduction of constraints on the optimization problem. We could also try to do an explicit costing of reliability, exp expressing reliability in terms of money, but that is a rather controversial approach at this point. Until recently, the greed and the fear were the only two things that we had to consider. But over the last decades, the environmental impact of energy generation and transmission has become much more visible and much more important. Therefore, instead of doing a balance simply between the greed and the fear, we have to balance it also with the environmental impact. And this is a more complex optimization problem because it's easy to make a system that's reliable and cheap but not environmentally friendly or environmentally friendly and reliable but that is probably not going to be cheap or cheap and environmentally friendly but that may not be very reliable. So we now have a three-way balancing problem which is a much more complex optimization problem. Some of the environmental effects can be monetized by that I mean uh, translated into money. For example, the operating cost of renewable generation is essentially zero and that will have an effect when we do economic dispatch and unit commitment. Or a carbon tax or carbon trading can be introduced to reflect the effect of CO2 emissions and those costs can be considered in the optimization problems. On the other hand, there are some effects that cannot be monetized, for example, the effect of hydrogeneration of salmons, and there, those constraints then have to be using additional operating constraints in our optimization problems. Not everything is driven by pure economics, because markets and companies take a short-term view. Sometimes it's necessary to take a longer-term view or to take strategic consideration into account. For example, reducing the dependence on imports of some types of fuels. And that's where the government energy policy comes into play. For example, in recent years, the governments have decided to introduce competitive electricity markets, which have completely changed power system economics. Governments also have a strong influence on the choice of primary energy sources, for example, the German government has been promoted heavily wind generation and photovoltaic generation, while the government of France has been a very keen advocate of nuclear power. And more locally, in the Pacific Northwest, there has been a big emphasis on energy conservation. So here is the outline for the course. We will start by a brief discussion of the organization of the electricity supply industry. We'll discuss what the major economic functions are in this industry and who does what, who are the actors. Then, because, as I mentioned, a lot of power system economics is translated into optimization problems, we will have an introduction to optimization theory and optimization techniques. We will discuss optimization with continuous variables first, and then we'll discuss briefly optimization with discrete variables. Armed with that, we can tackle traditional power system economics problems such as economic dispatch, unit commitment, and optimal power flow. The second part of the course will be devoted to competitive electricity markets. We will start with a review of basic concepts from economics to be able to handle the, our understanding of the markets. We will then talk about how electricity markets are organized and how various participants take part in these markets. We will discuss the effect of system security or operational reliability and ancillary services on the markets. And then we'll close with a discussion of the effects of transmission networks on electricity markets and the prices of electricity. There are two textbooks that I recommend for this class. The first one is Power Generation, Operation and Control by Al Wood and Bruce Wallenberg. This uh, book has a very good coverage of traditional power system economic problems such as 
economic dispatch and unit commit and optimal power flow. For the second part of the course, I recommend a book that I wrote a few years ago entitled Fundamentals of Power System Economics that looks at power system economics in the context of competitive electricity markets.